Let's take the same example as in the previous lesson. But this time, we decrease the speed of the boat with respect to the river to 3 meters per second and we increase the river current to 5 meters per second. And as you can see, we have the river current speed greater than the speed of the boat with respect to the water. In this condition, it is impossible to have a zero drift, meaning we can never move the boat along the path AD. In other words, the vector VB can never be vertical as that is the direction the boat would be moving in physically. Given this situation, at what angle phi with respect to the vertical should the boat head out in such that the drift DC is minimized? So we want to find the angle phi for which the drift DC is minimized. We begin solving with the same principles as we had in the previous lessons. We begin by obtaining the components of the velocity VB in the X and Y directions. In the X direction, the velocity will be VR minus VB with respect to R sine of phi and in the Y direction, the velocity will be VB with respect to R cos of phi. For the drift, we consider only the x direction, so it would be the velocity Vx times the time that the boat travelled. At this stage, you might be tempted to think, if we increase sine of phi to the maximum, then Vx would get to the minimum and therefore we would have the minimum drift. But no, as you increase phi, the vertical component of VB or VB with respect to R will begin to decrease. This would mean that the time that you take to get on to the other side will increase and therefore in the range computation, Vx will decrease but the time will increase. So we have to make sure that we strike the right balance between the x velocity and the time in order to get the minimum drift. First we'll obtain the time taken to cross over. Since the vertical displacement is known to us as d and the component of the velocity along the y-axis is v b with respect to r cos of phi and there is no acceleration along the y direction, the time taken will be d over vb with respect to r cos of phi. This is the time for which the boat is being rowed. Now we can use this time in order to compute the drift. The drift can be computed by multiplying the uniform velocity in the x direction or vx with the time since there is no acceleration in the x direction. So the drift x dc will be the x velocity times the time. The x velocity as computed in the previous step was vr minus vb with respect to r sine of phi and the time is d over vb with respect to r cos of phi. So now we have obtained a function for the drift in terms of the angle phi. We need the angle phi for which the drift is minimum. So how would we do that? We differentiate this function. For the minimum drift, we differentiate the function x dc with respect to phi. In order to obtain phi for which the drift is the minimum, we set the differentiation result to zero. 
you can see that D would cancel off and so would one of the sec phi's. Let's simplify this further. This simplifies down to a very simple equation. Sine of phi equals V B with respect to R over V R. So given that the speed of the current is higher than the speed of the boat with respect to the river, if we head out at an angle of phi with the vertical such that phi equals the sine inverse of VB with respect to R over VR, then our drift XDC will be at a minimum. Now substituting for VB with respect to R and VR, we obtain phi as 37 degrees. Substituting phi as 37 degrees, we obtain Vx as 3.2 meters per second and the time t as 41.67 seconds. Multiplying these, we get the drift dc as 133.33 meters. If you increase or decrease phi and then recompute Vx and T and the new drift, you will find that for all other angles of phi, the drift will exceed 133.33 meters.